Hey everyone, welcome back to Power Tips. Today, Malcolm is gonna to talk to us about customer insights data. Usually we're covering new features and what we're excited about, but we're all a little bit confused about customer insights data versus customer insights journeys and what all this stuff is. So we wanted to take a little break and just get an overview about customer insights data so that we're more prepared to talk about new features and more prepared to understand what's going on in the Power Platform. So Malcolm, take it away. Sounds good. So I'm uh, first, let's preface by saying by no means are am I or we an expert in this um, per se, right? So there's a lot of newness to this application, even though it's been around for quite some time. And so what I thought I'd do is just walk through some of the premise, which will get us to the question that I'll ask again at the end, why aren't people talking about this? And maybe they are, and we're just not hearing them, but I rarely run into a customer that is like, oh yeah, we're actively using customer insights data, or even do they allude to the fact that they think they should be using it, which is interesting. So we'll ponder that question at the end, but. I thought we would walk through a couple slides just to kind of set the, the tone. They are informational only that we're not, this is not a presentation uh, that goes into great detail, right? So so what is customer insights data? It's a, it's Microsoft's take on the customer data platform or CDP. And so the idea is ingest data, you've got the data, we, we build the profiles, um, ultimately get a good glimpse of our customers, whether they're business, uh, so like B2B style or customer individuals. And then we can take that data and leverage it in other applications. You can export it and use it. But as we work through a few slides, I'm going to get to one that shows you the, the profile and what it represents is that golden customer record. Because while we don't, I don't hear customers talking about this application, I hear them talk about this notion all the time. Right? So the idea is we have all this data and all these sources, and we have no idea how to bring it all together to get a true, Microsoft's one of their favorite coined terms is a 360 degree view of a customer, right? And so, yes, you get some of that in each individual application, but the true full robust 360 degree view is that golden customer record. You've got all your data sources pulled into one place and you're getting a good glimpse of what that one person does in all those avenues. So high, like I said, super high level, you can ingest data. This slide, I know it's kind of fuzzy, gives you a little bit of insight into um, just the different sources and the way I would look at this and the way we have been looking at this, you might not be able to connect directly to a data source, but if you can get your data into Excel and throw it into some location, then you can grab it or put it into a data lake, then you can ingest that data into customer insights data so that you can start to build upon it. And the building upon it is where you're starting to match things together. So you have multiple data uh, sets and you start to build in matching rules and basically say, I guess the example we hear the most often is, yeah, we have the same customer in multiple locations, but we don't have a common thread. There's no common ID. Those two systems exist in their own silo and the customer might even be spelled a little bit differently. It has the capability to factor in some like fuzzy matching. So a Steve, and a Steven, you can start to pull those things together. Uh, even if even if you don't have a lot to go on, it's it's got some pretty intelligent mechanisms in the background, algorithms, I suppose, that help it along the way and bring those customer records together. And Malcolm, then you quick can question. yeah, please do. Did I notice on the prior slide, Power Query is what's running that? It so you can leverage Power Query to do data transformation, especially with on-prem data, um, but but you can do it with anything. So yes, there is some Power Query uh, involved, so th so that you can massage the data to get it in the right format and whatnot. Yeah, I just wasn't sure because it doesn't say Power Query choose data source. Obviously, I don't know this app. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. It's um, it is leveraging. Yeah, and you can you can and I don't have it in these slides because that gets a little more technical. But you yeah, do have the ability to mass massage data through Power Query and pulls it in and then essentially takes all that data and the, and all the attributes and everything and allows you to match on them. And so, then once you, yeah, sorry. Yeah, once you've matched, then you actually have enrichment modules that you can layer in. Sorry, you were going to ask. So like the fives of our viewers who are familiar with Power <laughs> BI really have a leg up on this one, if that's Absolutely. The case. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and one of the questions we've had, we've done a session on this a couple of times, and one question we get a lot is, okay, hold on, do we need like a data scientist? And I think this is true of a lot of Microsoft tools. What they're giving us here is the point and click, drag and drop 
methodology, right? That mm -hmm. we're going to make it really easy. We're, they're going to live their value. They're going to empower organizations and individuals to achieve more by giving them the tools to, to do all the technical stuff behind the scenes. And they just have to walk through apps like this and pull it together and the system will just do it. But they definitely could build, you could build things that are doing this. It just, with your, your Power BI models and your, your data lakes and data how warehouses and lake houses now and all those fancy things um you can likely do a lot of this stuff but they're giving us that pre-built model to say instead of messing around with all that just give us the data enrich the data and then we'll start to compile the the profile for you so that you have those insights these um enrichment models and you'll notice a lot of this stuff is preview uh the the enrichment models is i think out of preview now this is an old screenshot but these are essentially models. You can see one is enhanced addresses. So it's like address validation and verification. And you layer this into your data set and it'll sweep through all your data and, and basically apply its enhancement measures, bringing everything up to par. So you've got the same format and things like that. It's, it's fascinating to watch it unfold. And then you end up getting um, unified data. So, so again, here you can sort of see, okay, we got first name and from these data sources, we're taking first name from here and first name from there, and we're matching that together. There's way more to it than what I'm showing you here, but, but it does, I would say, eliminates the need for that data scientist at this part of it, because it allows you to build the matching in. Um, but there are, there are things that I think you need a, a specialized skill set for once you start seeing the profile. And so speaking of the profile, this is an, essentially what you're going to end up with, right? And again, we're like super fast forwarding through this. There's so much more to it. But for the purposes of this, this discussion, I just wanted to kind of give that high level overview. And then here's your profile, which at a glance, it, pretty, pretty functional, right? Who is the customer? What are their core attributes? And then you can see up in the top right of the screen, number of policies, average policy amount. You can do like customer lifetime spend, churn um, warnings. So, hey, this customer is starting to look like a customer who's who's likely to fall off the radar or who's going to, to churn out of the business and you need to do something to engage them back in. And that's the kind of data that people want, but they just don't know how to get to. And this application starts to make that a reality. It brings us to you and gives you some creative control over what do you want to build? What, what are the metrics and measures you want to see? Um, again, in, in eight minutes, I'm not going to cover all there is to know about it, but but it has the capability. And that's what led me to think we should talk about this, because I don't understand why more organizations aren't drooling over this and factoring in strategy to make this happen. And again, maybe they are, and I'm just not hearing it, but rarely do I hear somebody talk about customer insights data as if they're using it or want to use it. And so that's that's one question that I that I have, right? As well, I'd love to delve into like if they did want to go down that path, where are they going to run into challenges and struggles? So all that to say, let's have a like a quick discussion around those those two questions in particular. Do you guys hear about this tool? Like have you heard people talking about customer insights data? No. Yeah, not really. I think I've worked on some proposals where the requirements kind of would lend themselves to customer insights data, but I haven't seen many clients using it in real life. Um, and I think we're talking about like this is so powerful on its own, but we can also combine this with the other tools, right? So like I could build a segment in customer insights mm -hmm. data right? And then use that segment in customer insights journeys for my marketing, right? So it's right. like, instead of needing it, like combining all our data one in one spot and being able to build our marketing list off of this data from multiple sources, like that's really powerful. And yeah. I don't know, I don't know if people are using it and why not, or if it's only larger customers that are not telling us their secrets, maybe. <laughs> maybe they're keeping the magic to themselves yeah i can't I help but wonder if people are just overwhelmed by it all right go ahead Heidi. yeah and and maybe this is an interesting take on it and it might be wrong but more people are talking about fabric and doing their data modeling and fabric and i think at least with the people that i've been working with 
we tend to go the fabric route because, right, mm -hmm. Microsoft's telling us all the time at the conferences that we're attending and different information that they're putting out. Use fabric to model all of your data and then you can push it into all of your other systems. So I wonder. Maybe that has something to do with it. Maybe it definitely does. it definitely could. My my take on that is what I was alluding to. Like this is the here's the pre built thing, which is why it costs what it does. I'll flip over to costs in a minute. But um, but they've done some of that legwork for you, so that you don't have to model your data. You don't have to build it. You don't have to ingest it. You have to ingest it, but mm. you don't have to do the um, you know quite the same level of of lift that you do in in building a data lake and all that stuff. And I don't. Again, I don't even know if I'm using the terms right, some of them, but they um, I, that's what I think is they're they're kind of giving us the sure you could do it on your own or you could take this pre built tool mm -hmm. that's going to ingest for you a little easier and then it's going to allow you to match things. And the matching is pretty straightforward, like it is point and click kind of style um, to pick which fields. So uh, that could have something to do, with it, but, but I do think you're right, because if you look back at some of the conferences, even in the last year, fabric is being talked about everywhere and it's just mm. it's the answer it seems to be for a lot of this stuff so maybe that's why well, a lot and it's almost it. like this is the low code and that's the pro code if you're thinking about like the yeah, dynamics yeah, world. good call yeah. and i think what's interesting is i feel like i did some learning around customer insights back before it had data on the name must have been a few years ago and i was kind of expecting what we talked about today to be vastly different from that but most of it was very similar um and so i feel like it for me i was always kind of nervous because i thought that there was some complicated stuff in customer insights but i think it's a lot easier and we need to market that better to customers like hey there's a lot you can do here and that you can like you said get started in a low code way yeah yeah, so this was um, for those watching. This was obviously, like I said, fast forwarded version, right? Um, there's a there's a number of uh, walkthroughs and tutorials and videos. One really good one, uh, to to the surprise of nobody, is is that uh, Lisa Crosby, um, who does tremendous content. She has a great overview. It's like 15, I think it's less than 15 minutes, and she goes into a little more detail on some of the the key features and functions. And it's not so much a tr tutorial training thing as it is a uh, here's what the tool is, but but more in depth than what you've seen here. So if you're looking for one, that's a great, great resource if you want more information about how it works. I did want to pull over a couple quick things. So here, and this is interesting to me, th this is the um, the release wave for 2024 wave two, and there's three items in it for this. So that that's interesting to me. Like. The, doesn't seem like it's getting a whole lot of attention uh, from Microsoft. I mean, there's a few things and these are probably substantial. I don't really know, but um, there if you look at the dates too, we've got like public preview November of 2024. So TBD uh, in terms of whether we're actually going to see it then. And then the other one at the bottom, mm -hmm. the Unify Sales and Marketing is February 2025. So they're not in a hurry to be pushing some of this stuff out, which is interesting. So it not to I mention think, two of those are about lakes. So that is supporting the flow of fabric into insight. Yeah, mm -hmm. right. Which is really interesting. And then pricing is the other thing that I want to touch on because people ask about it. This is just literally the website. You can go get this. This is not not special information. Um, but to the to the last question on the slide I had, mm -hmm. well, you know, how should people get started? trial just spin up a trial they give you some sample data you can play with and go ahead and just get get started build a ingest some data and build a couple of um, matching rules and and get familiar with the the lay of the land if you will and then the costs two thousand so this is canadian i'm a canadian so this is cad i don't know i'd have to flip it to us but so obviously gonna be a little less on the us side but that's per month which to me is like wow that's substantial. Now it does follow the attach logic. So if you have qualifying apps already, uh, you can use that. But I think it's an important call out. You don't have to be using any of the Dynamics infrastructure. I'm not sure if we attract a, a video watchers from outside of the Microsoft ecosystem, but if we do and you're like, maybe I would use this, you don't have to use any of the Dynamics or any of the other things. You probably should, just FYI. But if you don't, that's okay. You can have it as a standalone app. Um, but that pricing may be another reason organizations are like, that's a lot of money per month. And while the value is probably there, 
I, I think there's a certain tier of customer that would look at that price and probably not raise their eyebrows. Most of the ones that I work with, especially, I think would probably look at that and be like, mm, yeah, we'll, we'll do some uh, Excel analysis on our data to start and see where we get from there. So. Two things for you. One, I just brought up the US site. It is 1700 per tenant per month or the attached license is 1000 per tenant per month for any Americans watching. Yes. Second question, which you may or may not know, do most people purchase both customer insights data and customer insights journeys? Mm. So it it comes together. So this is customer insights as a bundle. You're getting insights journeys and insights data. And so if you don't have a marketing automation platform, it's it's coming as part of this. You get the, the journey piece in here, delivered connected customer journeys and campaigns with unified customer I data. Guess. Good question. And then the unified people packs is kind of the add on on top if you're going to go farther than what you get in the base plan. Yeah, I guess it's probably volume. I, I haven't read all the fine print on it, so I'm not. And again, That's I'm not super versed, but just curious. refers to uniquely identified individual that is created through the collection of defined data sources. Uh, data sets from multiple systems so it mm. basically profiles right each each individual yes. profile yeah yeah interesting so the licensing is related back to your profiles and also related back to your interaction so in a large enterprise where we have a lot even more people and we ha are doing kind of large scale email marketing there will be additional licensing on top of this to consider so I think the main reason I thought it would be wise to talk about this, I mean, we try to cover all the apps and and we, we can't specialize in every single one. So this was very high level, but it does beg the question, like if you're an organization who's who's craving this or frankly, you need this customer record, right? the golden customer record that we talked about and you're struggling to get there. This is a tool you should probably look into right as a as a potential path. There's other ways, of course, to get there. but this this seems like a promising application and when you watch some of the more detailed videos of the like the how to it it is pretty surprising just how straightforward they make it i, I don't want to oversimplify it because there's still a lot of thought and planning going into it but it does that i refer to the point and click experience you essentially like i want this field and this field and it's going to match this field and this field and you create your rules and then it starts to match that data and you can do all kinds of wild stuff like it starts to do look alike matching. So if you want to expand on your segment, you can tell it to go and find from your data set people who kind of look like this profile. Mm. And, and it'll start to give you all kinds of great imagery about where do, where do these customers exist? Where's the overlap? Where are the ones that that look like we could probably sell them this other thing because they look a lot like some of these other customers. So and that that. The power in that is to me is pretty immense. So yeah, that's that's all I had for us to talk about. I just think it's a fascinating tool that doesn't get a lot of attention. I agree. And I am sorry for my role in not giving it any attention. I have not had any interaction with customer insights data to be completely transparent, other than Fair. I spun up a trial once and I was playing around with it so I could answer some general questions on a Microsoft certification exam. So this was extremely helpful, Malcolm. Thank you so much for this walkthrough. I think this begs a shout out that Malcolm will be teaching a full day workshop on customer insights in two weeks, right, Malcolm? So if you will be at Summit North America and you want to learn more about how you can incorporate customer insights, check out Malcolm's Academy course. I'll link it to the show notes in the bottom. I didn't pay her to say that. No. Does anyone else have an Academy course? Oh, I have an academy course. So if you are coming and you want to skill up about something totally different, which is System Administrator 101, you can check that out as well. But the most exciting news is that Power Tips will be coming at you live from Summit in two weeks. So stay tuned for our next Power Tips live with lots of industry experts talking about what we learn at Summit North America. Until then, have a great week.